One of the more interesting questions of paleoanthropology is the origin of the late Neanderthals that exhibit features such as massive brains, small brow ridges, and tall statures typically associated with Homo sapiens. The remains of hundreds of Neanderthals have been discovered throughout Eurasia, most notably in Germany, Italy, Spain, and France. However, finding complete intact skeletons remains uncommon. If there is one member of this extinct species who could be considered world-renowned, it has to be the Laferasi man, also known as Laferasi I. This skeleton was discovered over a century ago and is still the most complete Neanderthal skull ever recovered. The Laferasi I skeleton is also one of the most important Neanderthal individuals, both for its completeness and for its historical role in the interpretation of Neanderthal anatomy and lifeways, according to a recent study. Laferasi I is a male Neanderthal skeleton that is estimated to be 45 to 50,000 years old. The skull has many of the classic characteristics of Neanderthal anatomy, such as a low, sloping forehead and large nasal openings. And most remarkably, with a cranial capacity of 1,641 cubic centimetres, it is the second largest hominid skull discovered, following a mood, one which will be discussed later in the video. Remarkably, Laferasi I and Amud have been shown to share many transitional characteristics with modern humans when compared to other Neanderthals. His teeth, which are all preserved, are severely worn, indicating that he was older at the time of his death. His front incisors show slanted wear that is not caused by chewing. One theory to explain this unusual wear on his teeth is that he habitually held something in place between his front teeth, such as a hide, which he then scraped with a tool. Although this hypothesis has been debated, the use of teeth as tools could be a remarkable Neanderthal behavioral adaptation. Historically, the shape of the teeth has been associated with the shape of the face and jaw, which was also discovered to be located further forward than any other early human fossil. The cheekbones and teeth were very similar to modern humans, and Laferasi I had a long mandible. Along with the remarkably intact Laferasi skull, the excavations uncovered the remains of at least seven Neanderthals, two adults and five children. Other members of the social group are believed to have intentionally buried the individuals at the La Ferrisi site. This was a radical theory at the time, implying that Neanderthals were highly intelligent, socially complex, and strikingly similar to modern. Who knows, maybe this was some kind of Neanderthal cemetery. Numerous studies have proposed various dates for the specimen, but they typically range between 59,000 and 45,000 years ago. Given that Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago, he was living during the final millennia of his species' existence on Earth. Archaeologists have closely examined the remains and gathered a good amount of information about their lives. According to research, this was a male standing around 171 centimetres, five feet seven inches, which is considered tall for a Neanderthal, and he was about 45 years old when he died. While the lifespan of Neanderthals is unknown, it is unusual to find an individual over the age of 40, implying he was relatively old for his species. Despite his relatively tall stature, he is regarded as a classic example of Neanderthal anatomy, and in some ways has served as an archetype for how scientists envision this species. The skeleton clearly demonstrates the heavy and sloped forehead, as well as the large nasal opening that are associated with this member of the human family. Most importantly, his leg and foot bones provide unequivocal evidence that Neanderthals walked upright and in a manner very similar to humans. This marked a significant shift away from the notion that Neanderthals were brutes compared to their super-smart cousins, the upright Homo sapiens. Indeed, Laferasi I is regarded by many scientists as the classic example of Neanderthal anatomy. His leg and foot bones unequivocally demonstrated that Neanderthals walked upright and with a gait similar to modern humans. This discovery refuted the earlier reconstruction of the La Chapelle aux Saint Neanderthal skeleton by French paleontologist Pierre Marcelin Boulle, which depicted this species as stooped, brutish creatures. Nevertheless, La Chapelle aux Saint is the most convincing example of a possible Neanderthal deliberate burial, but like all claimed Neanderthal burials, it is considered controversial. 
The La Chapelle au Sein specimen is also typical of classic Western European Neanderthal anatomy and is estimated to be have lived around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. Similar to La Ferrazzi, the La Chapelle au Sein Neanderthals was around 40 years old and had large brain case of around 1,600 cubic centimeters. The Neanderthals were very smart. They had brains the same size as early modern humans and were very clever at using local resources, but they may have lacked the ability to expand their thinking and adapt to rapidly changing conditions. In a twist of fate, modern humans finally gained a foothold in Eurasia they never relinquished. The Neanderthals lived in ever smaller and more isolated areas, suffering what we now call loss of habitat, eventually vanishing from the earth. Shanidar III's life is grounded not in large evolutionary forces, but in particular circumstances. There is quite a severe and deep cut to a rib on Shanidar III's left side, but a small arrow or spearhead. The depth of the cut indicates that a sharp instrument stabbed his chest and probably collapsed his lung, and may be evidence of the oldest known homicide in the fossil record. However, Shanidar II and IV are sometimes not considered to be Neanderthals, Shanidar II had a higher cranial vault and other skull proportions that did not correspond to the average Neanderthal skull. This could indicate that the Neanderthals from Shanidar had a morphology of anatomically modern humans than other Neanderthals, or that the group was very diverse. This demonstrates similarities between the two species, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Researchers initially interpreted these characteristics as intermediate between Levantine Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. Lastly, Amud-1 is a nearly complete but poorly preserved adult Southwest Asian Neanderthal skeleton, estimated to be around 45,000 years old and classified as male. With an estimated height of 1.78 meters, 5 feet 10 inches, it is significantly taller than any other known Neanderthal, and its skull has the largest cranial capacity, 1,740 cubic centimeters, of any human skull found in the fossil record. This makes it one of the most well-known Neanderthal specimens. The long limbs are also unusual for a Neanderthal, as they are thought to have shorter limbs than modern humans. Amud's skull, like that of other Neanderthal specimens from the Levant, is long, broad, and has a cranial vault height that is intermediate between European Neanderthals and modern humans. Amud has an unusual mosaic of features when compared to European Neanderthals, including a large nose and face, a small brow ridge, and small teeth. Unlike the majority of other Neanderthals, particularly European Neanderthals, Amud has slender brow ridges and a slightly developed chin. As stated, Amud is significantly taller than any other known Neanderthal, with longer arms and legs and a more gracile build. In fact, Amud shares many characteristics with early Homo sapiens and modern sapiens, and is sometimes identified as Homo sapiens based on multivariate analysis, unlike other Neanderthals. The Amud facial skeleton was incomplete and fragmentary, so its assumed form has been reconstructed, so the specimen's measurements, particularly the mid-face, are speculative. A virtual reconstruction revealed that the Amud facial skeleton was smaller than previously thought, and the cranial vault was shorter during the individual's lifetime, having been deformed in situ by geological pressure. Aside from that, even a cursory examination of Amud's face would call into question any classifications based on its properties, as its incompleteness is clearly a potential source of misinterpretation. Thus, for example, its nasal cavity of which only the inferior part has survived, cannot be reconstructed. All measurements must be approximated. Nonetheless, according to these rough estimates, Amud's nasal aperture is as similar to those of various archaic Homo sapiens specimens as it is to those of certain classic Neanderthals, such as La Chapelle. The reported measurements appear to correspond more with a view of these traits as primitive rather than modern Neanderthal traits. According to one study, Amud has the most classic Neanderthal facial features. However, this claim contradicts the acknowledgement that Amud is intermediate in certain facial features between Neanderthals and modern humans. In other ways, Amud is distinct from both European Neanderthals and the Shanidar I Neanderthal. The problematic nature of this claim is further demonstrated by the fact 
that re-evaluation of the morphological data for Amud reveals that it lacks many of the distinguishing Neanderthal characteristics. Amud's postcranial skeleton is as distinct as its cranium, and it differs from that of Neanderthals and modern humans. Its upper and lower limb bones are long, in stark contrast to the shorter bones and typical proportions of the supposedly cold-adapted Neanderthals. Its estimated stature is quite tall when compared to classic Neanderthal males, and it is similar to early Homo sapiens population. Indeed, some of Amud's archaic cranial features are also found in modern populations. In conclusion, an examination of Amud's morphology, rather than providing significant support for the claim that it corresponds to the Neanderthal pattern, clearly establishes its dissociation from this category. Paleogenetics has helped us learn a lot more about the time of divergence of human clades and their genetic relationships, but most Neanderthal fossils still lack DNA confirmation. A study published in the journal Anthropology and Paleogenetics concluded that the later Neanderthals are partially descended from Homo sapiens, who lived more than 100,000 years ago. Thus, the answer to the question, what was the origin of the exceptionally modern but gracile skeletons and skulls of the late Neanderthals, is early anatomically modern humans from the tropics, according to the study. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.